Good morning. I'd like to uh, thank our host, Simeon, uh, for your hospitality and for everybody for attending today. I hope this will be a, a, a forum that generates discussion for how to best optimize resource use in Serbia. And I'm glad that everybody is here to do that. I'm probably going to leave you with more questions than answers. But um, I'm going to proceed with a, a description now of a bit about Freeport MacMoran, who we are, what are our core values, um, some of our recent investment projects and the scale of those, a bit about our TMOC project, which is in a very early stage uh, with our partner Reservoir, four key observations that I would make about the mineral industry in general and in particular in Serbia uh, that I think applies worldwide and here. Uh, and how those affect the optimization of mineral resource use in Serbia, which I think is the, the relevant question for this conference. And um, that's going to focus on contemporary discovery to development timelines, which again I think is a, is a key component as we discuss legislation and as we as investors look for places to invest. And then conclusions and implications for Serbia and what we see worldwide on that. Uh, those are a couple of our mines down there at the bottom. We, we mine in 13 different places on the planet in four different continents, uh, in very sensitive alpine environments, in difficult desert environments, at high elevation, uh, in the jungle. And um, we understand these, these different challenging circumstances very well, and we, we rise to that challenge to adapt to those, whether it's a process issue, whether it's a... Uh, environmental or social issue, Freeport is always eager to adapt to those challenges. So Freeport is a, is a company of people and our success here in Serbia starts really with our team here in Serbia and uh, this is a few of those people here. Uh, some of them are here in the crowd today. Any success that we have here in Serbia is based on their success and if you see them congratulate them. I'd like to congratulate them for having achieved our very very strict safety requirements. Uh, this is a very tough standard that Freeport sets and these guys have met that and I congratulate them and they say that if a geologist is lucky he finds ore. Uh, I consider that if a geologist finds a team like this that's, that's a, a better discovery. I should point out that our, our team is international but we have about 90 plus percent of Serbian workforce and in addition to contributing here we have a lot of Serbians that work both overseas in permanent positions as well as just training. So Serbia is a, is a key component for Freeport, and our people are our key asset. So a bit about Freeport. We're uh, the world's largest publicly traded copper producer. We're also the world's largest producer of molybdenum. If anybody can say molybdenum, you're, you're, you're quite accomplished. Um, we produce about a million to two million ounces of byproduct gold per year as well. Uh, also a lot of byproduct cobalt as a result of our operations in the Congo. We have about 35,000 employees. Uh, we spend about 300 to 600 million dollars annually on environmental stewardship and protection. That's one of our core values. Uh, every one of our mines has a closure plan. That means that every mining operation before it starts has a plan to close that mine when the ore body is exhausted. We spend about 275 million last year in exploration. It's slightly lower this year. But that's on the order of magnitude of what we spend each year on exploration from green fields up to brown fields and near mine exploration. And uh, we're, we are one of the world's largest underground miners. We're doing that in several different places in the world from small to large scales. And I think by uh, in the next few years, Grasper will be the largest individual underground mine in the world. So these are just some, some recent investment projects that we've done worldwide. We spend about four and a half to five and a half billion dollars a year on mining related investments. That doesn't include our oil and gas. Um, some of these are just expansions, some are greenfield projects, some involve very uh, interesting new metallurgical applications in places such as Tenki Funkarumi where we're, we're vat leaching oxide copper ore and cobalt ore to just general mill expansions which we're doing to our Morenci sulfide project in Arizona. These are some of our commitments and standards and um, these are fairly well known where ICMM members voluntary principles on security and human rights. Freeport ascribes to and expects these uh, compliances with each of its operations, including exploration. So a bit about our TMOC project. We won't talk about that in a lot of detail yet. It's an early stage project. It was only discovered about a year and a half ago. Um, it was a result of about a 10-year program of exploration in Serbia on a variety of mineral prospects 
throughout the country, not only in the TMOC belt, but elsewhere. Uh, this year we'll expend around 14 to 15 million dollars. We've drilled about 50 holes there. Some are quite deep, up to 2.1 kilometers. Um, we'll spend around $20 million plus or minus next year. We're in the process of finalizing that now. And our goal is to proceed through scoping and feasibility as quickly as possibly uh, to a, a major development project if exploration continues to be positive. And as every project, the, the, this one has challenges. It's deep. Um, that means that it takes a long time just to get every drill hole down. It'll take a long time to develop it if it proceeds to that. But so far, it's very encouraging. So what are these key, four key points that I wanted to mention and that we've observed worldwide and how they may affect both legislation and mineral progress <coughs> in Serbia? Well, as we can see from our deposit or our prospect, deposits are increasingly deep and costly to explore. I think we all know that as explorers. Um, and I think the, the recent examples, three out of the four significant deposits that have been found recently in Serbia demonstrate that. All of these occur at, at high depths. Uh, Avala has a brilliant discovery that's quite shallow, and congratulations to them. But the trend is, both in Serbia and worldwide, that these things are deeper, more costly, and more time-consuming to explore and discover. They're, as a result of that, they're increasingly difficult to de develop. You know, if things are half a kilometer to a kilometer deep, they have all of these problems that you don't have in an open pit mine, uh, rock mechanics, temperatures, they're metallurgically challenging. That might apply to some of the near surface deposits as well. And we have constantly improving environmental standards. That is a great thing. That's good for all of us. It does come at a cost. And the main cost of all of these three factors is the factor of time. So all of those we can handle generally with, with additional expense. But the one thing that we cannot change is time. And this is what we need to talk about as far as how to best develop mineral resources and the investment climate for that in Serbia. So people are quite aware of what it takes to find a mineral deposit. It all starts with an initial discovery, which will be a geologist there in the lower left. And if we look at the axis of time on the right and expenditure on the, uh, on the, the y-axis, this is just a very simple picture of what the discovery and development process looked like. But it all has to start with that initial discovery. And when we talk about an investment environment that's going to create the kind of discoveries that have been made in Serbia in the last few years, it is critical, in my view, to preserve and encourage that initial investment for an initial discovery. What does that initial investor need to see in order to take that risk, in order to take that uncertainty? In the copper business, we assume that it takes about two or 300 individual drill tests in order to find a major deposit, two or 300. That means that we, as Freeport, have to drill about two or 300 prospects in order to find one mine. And that's a statistic that applies pretty much worldwide. That's been demonstrated. The next stage is delineation scoping feasibility. Uh, that's a much higher expenditure. There's much more certainty at that point. And then finally, we get to development and mining. And that's hopefully a multi-decade um, process. But what we're really going to look at in the next few slides is what are the timing requirements for these first two stages. So what are typical timelines? And then what will best encourage, sustain, and improve this cycle? What can encourage that? Because that's really where uh, we can look at the mineral industry to continue to deliver to Serbia improvement and growth. So let's look at our history here in Serbia just as an example of that. We first came in 2001 and looked at the, uh, the Timok district mines as some other prospects in the tertiary belt. We attended the Bohr conference in 2002. It was a great scientific conference on a place that few of us knew anything about. And then the really heavy work started in 2003 when we established our first entity and started actual license uh, acquisition and testing. So over the next eight years, we tested about seven different prospects with about 50 to 70 drill holes and expended about $10 million. So that's that two to 300 prospects that I mentioned to you. Our statistics are actually quite good here. We beat those statistics, but at the same time, we were testing many other targets in many other countries to reach that final discovery. And finally, in 2012, our 10th hole of an individual program on that particular prospect, not overall in the country, but our 10th hole identified some interesting mineralization at Chukarapeki. So I call this the explorer's decade. It's literally about eight, nine, 10 years in order to reach that final point of making a significant discovery. And that's pretty much 
that's pretty much a rule worldwide. It fits with that 200 or 300 prospects that need to be tested worldwide to find a major deposit. So look, let's look at some of our other mines and prospects worldwide and see how does this time frame fit with that. Our Erzberg Grassberg uh, district in Indonesia was a simple geologic discovery. It was a giant outcropping ore body in a very difficult place to access. Even that took 13 years to define an ore body and put it into production, where we had literally a mountain of outcropping copper gold ore at Erzberg. But the really big discovery there at Grassberg took about 32 years from inception. And that, that I hope, drives home the importance of having long-term mineral tenure in one of these districts to allow a major discovery to happen in that district. So we can look down here at the timeline of production of Grassberg and Erzberg, which is the red curve there. But we really need to add on to the beginning of that, that 10 years explorer's decade. And we really need to recognize that having long-term mineral tenure was a key point of that cycle. So let's look at Resolution, Arizona. This is a Rio Tinto BHP joint venture. It's a great deposit discovery. It's the opposite end of the spectrum geologically from Erzberg and Grassberg. Extremely deep, long time to identify and find. And it was discovered in 1994. It's a gigantic deposit, but because of that depth and all of the complications associated with that, it's still in pre-feasibility 19 years later. This is a reality. Um, there are certainly complications with that, but all of those complications are typical of these deeper, uh, more difficult deposits that we're going to face going forward. So that appears to be one opposite end of the spectrum. But let's take a look at what's, what's the track record here in Serbia as far as discoveries go as well. So Bor River, the Borska Reka deposit, was essentially the down plunge extension of the original Bor mine. It was discovered in 1976. The first reserves were approved in 1999, and the second reserves in 2005. It again has complications of technology, development, access, etc. But we look at that cycle, and it's similar to what we see for the other ones, about 20, 23 years. Choco Marine, this is a well-known, high-grade, relatively small deposit in the Timok Belt. Um, it has metallurgical challenges. It's got a mixed ore with a lot of different components, which make that a challenge for it. It was discovered in 1981. The first ore, was, ore reserve was proven in 2004, which gives it, again, a cycle of about 23 years. If we look at um, Yatter, uh, Rio Tinto's lithium borage discovery, again, about 2004. Um, as of about 2011, it proceeded roughly to pre-feasibility, and it's, it's still, as I'm aware, in pre-feasibility now, so about nine plus years just to get to the start of pre-feasibility. So what we're seeing here is a, is a pretty good indication of that somewhere in the 10 plus year range is that explorer and developer's time frame to get to a significant mineral discovery. So, with those comments, I'm going to leave it to you guys to discuss later on as to how do we encourage the investor down there at the lower right left-hand corner of the graph to take that initial risk and say, yes, I can see my 15-year window, my 20-year window, in which I have mineral tenure to allow me to take that initial financial risk, that financial uncertainty to invest in that early stage exploration. We all want to get to the upper right as quickly as possible. That's our goal. Um, I think the state, the companies, the employees are all aligned in that objective. That is our goal. Get to production as quickly and as safely as possible. Uh, it's notable that, that the investors are often probably more motivated to get to that because the money that they spend at the lower left is essentially a sunk cost until they receive something from production. So we are as motivated as the state is to get things into production quickly. So I'll leave it open to you as to what best is going to encourage, sustain, and improve that cycle of investment starting at the lower left and moving to the upper right. Thank you.